just what I mean. You two team keep it clean. You see my boy, you two team like keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, uh, which is a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to, and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of NFL Questions from Subs, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. We got some great questions like we always do because y'all always bring it. Let's do it. First question came from my guy, Isaac. He said, Engraven, hope this question finds you and your family doing well. Oh, yeah, we're doing really good. I appreciate it, Isaac. He said, now recently on social media, I've been beginning to see either A, disrespect for the Ravens, or B, respect for the Browns, and that the Browns have begun to be favored over the Ravens as the predicted winner of the AFC North this year. I personally don't see that happening, but I would like to hear your perspective and or prediction on who will be the king of the North this year. Shout out to you for all uh, the best Ravens content, and keep up the good work, man. Uh, I appreciate it, Isaac. Um, my whole thing with that, I, I don't see it as necessarily disrespect that people may be picking the Browns to win the division this year. But at the same time, um, with the Ravens, I, I think it's because the Browns, they, their roster continues to get better and better and better every single year. They have these Madden all-star rosters every single year. But then at the same time, you got to look at what's happened with these rosters. The Ravens have still been taking care of business against the Browns. Now, I think that a lot of um, why people are maybe picking the Browns a bit more, uh, and, and you got to respect it, is because of the way that last year went. Of course, the Ravens early on in the season beat them up badly. Um, and not that it's an excuse, but the Browns had a new head coach, new GM, new all of that stuff, uh, new system. Um, that they were putting in place And it was the first game of the season Ravens took advantage though And I wasn't mad I know none of us were mad at that um, But in the last game it was, it was going back and forth It was like a ping pong A tennis match It was going back and forth Back and forth Back and forth um, Well then uh, actually, Lamar, when he was still in the game, uh, Ravens were they got out to a little nice lead. But then when he got out, then the Browns start coming back, and then, but it was just crazy. But anyway, uh, the Browns were a lot more competitive in that game. Uh, so I think it may be based off of the way that the Browns uh, went throughout last season, and the fact that they they was they were matching up with the Ravens pretty good last year at the end of last year. And just them overall as a team, they got more comfortable with the system. They got more familiar with the system. And now they'll be a whole nother year into the system. And they will have had an off offseason. Um, but I, I, so I, I ain't mad if somebody picked the Browns to win a division. Me, for the division this year, um, I think it's going to be close. Again, just like it was last year. I think it's going to be crazy just like it was last year. I think it's going to be close. Um, based off of everything... I could I could see some ties in records at the end of the year. Oh, that's what happened last year too. Um, right now I, I do gotta go with Ravens though. Um, because they but one thing about Ravens though, if 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 they're gonna win a division, they gotta beat Pittsburgh too. They gotta beat Pittsburgh too, because Pittsburgh they've been they've been getting us. I know Lamar Jackson only played them like what did he play them twice? But he lost both times. He has not beat Pittsburgh yet. Um, so that is a big hurdle that because he played them once in 2019 lost. There were some funny calls in there. I remember there was a pass interference on Mark Andrews that resulted in a pick, but they didn't call pass interference. There was uh, the the drop, the incomplete pass, but they called the interception on Lamar. So, so two picks should have actually not been picks. But I don't, I don't feel like getting heated about that again because I was oh wow I was heated about that that year, boy. Man. Um, but anyway, I, Ravens got to They got to take care of business against the Steelers. Cause I know a lot of people counting out the Steelers. They like, oh, Ben Roethlisberger's another year older, and the team ain't. What the, no, they they still gonna be a tough team. Like if you gonna be straight up, be straight up, man. Steelers still gonna be a tough team. Browns gonna be a tough team, and Bengals can't even sleep on the Bengals too, man. You can't. Um, cause Bengals, they, they known to be one of them little sneaky, annoying teams. They used to be a lot more annoying to the Ravens than they have been recently. Um, but they, Joe Burrow get back, they get healthy. They got like 50 good receivers on the team. They could be one of them sneaky, annoying teams. So the division is going to be tough, man. It's going to be really tough. 
Um, so Ravens, for them to really edge it out, they got to be able to take care of business against the Steelers, too. You have to. Next question came from uh, Turtle Panda. He said, my question is, what kind of season do you think Sack Daddy will have this year? When I was working at Five Below, I had seen him in the store a few times. Hey, shout out to Five Below, because I got some headphones from there, some Bluetooth headphones. $5, because, again, everything is $5 or below. And they they work better than uh, Beats. Beats by Dre, they work better than those, better than any Apple headphones, better, they, they are great, man. Anyway, he said, when I was working at Five Below, I had seen him in the store a few times with his family. Hey, shout out to him for having all that money, having an NFL contract, but still shopping at Five Below. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a new Jalen Ferguson fan. Shout out to him, just because of that. Uh, but anyway, he said, I can say he is looking like he is in better shape than last season. Uh, that, that has me thinking that this could be his breakout year to live up to that name. Uh, I can see him putting up between three to five sacks, but hopefully he proves me wrong and gets more. Uh, thank you for all that you do uh, to give everyone in this community a positive outlook on life and how to treat others. Love this channel and team. Keep it clean. I hey, appreciate that, Turtle Panda. Thank you. Um, hopefully this is the year. Ho hopefully this is the year where um, he really gets it, uh, where stuff starts to really click and, and he just he can take that next step. I think the Ravens really need to figure out what they're going to do with him. Um, and how they're going to use him. Like my guy wants to be where it said a long time ago. Jalen Ferguson, based off of his body, he is a hands-in-the-dirt player. Uh, whether DN or you want to move him around an inside interior defensive lineman, D-tackle, um, he is a hands-in-the-dirt guy. He is not an outside linebacker. Um, he just, that's not him right now. Now, I don't know if he's if he's slimmed down this offseason. Now, I haven't really seen him. Um, but based off of last year, you he got to be hands in the dirt. He shouldn't be dropping back at all, in my opinion. I'm not a football coach or anything, but it's just my opinion. But I don't think he should be dropping back at all in the coverage, anything like that. Um, so I think Ravens just really need to put him in a place where they he, he can try to succeed. Because last year, was it like, yeah, last year, as the season went along, he looked more comfortable because early on he looked very out of place. Uh, he looked like he wasn't comfortable, but that's part of on the job on the job training. Excuse me. Um, so hopefully this year he'll be a lot more comfortable. But I don't even. Um, what was he a third round pick a couple years ago? Yeah, he 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 definitely gonna have to uh, show his stuff because not that his his spot is up for grabs. I don't really think it is, um, but his playing time certainly will be. So, he got to turn it on this year for sure, man. Next question came from my guy Howard. He said, what's happening in Graven? I saw your video regarding Lamar Jackson missing a few first days at camp due to the COVID situation. And it got me to thinking that maybe Lamar is just one of those people who has a very unique immune system. I remember back in his rookie year, right after Flacco got hurt and Harbaugh named him the starter, he got sick, the stomach virus, and couldn't practice. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Hey, look at, see, that's why I love y'all because y'all think way outside the box for stuff, man. Uh, he said RG3 ran the whole practice by himself. The next season, his MVP year, he had to miss several practices, also leading up to games from being sick. Uh, also, the last game that year against the Steelers, he had to uh, take off to the sidelines because he had the flu really bad. Uh, then last season, he gets COVID and uh, has the bad symptoms and lingering effects. Uh, and then also, he didn't include this in his in his uh, question, but also the Browns game. We know what happened with that, too. And we all done been there before. When it's time, it's time. Like, and when you can't wait, because <laughs> we, all, we all done had that run before. Or that, that walk where you like, you trying to walk fast, but you ain't trying to walk too fast because you, you want to still keep it clean. Ooh, anyway, uh, he said, think about it. Some people are just susceptible to viruses and illnesses whenever something uh, is going around like the flu season. And now we got COVID and it just seems like Lamar catches all of them. Just my observations. What are your thoughts? Um, that could be the case. Uh, it's just it's, it's just un unfortunate uh, for Lamar. Um, we're not here to get into the whole vaccinated, non-vaccinated. We're not getting into all that because I just seen so many, so much of that in on Twitter and in the comments and, and, and just everywhere. It's like. Yeah, I nope, not doing it here. Um, but yeah, it's just unfortunate, man. Um, cause that happens sometimes. That happens sometimes. Um, cause we all know people who they uh, tend to get a little more sick than others, and they tend to get a little more sick than the norm. Uh, so if that is the case, it is an unfortunate situation for. Them. <laughs> Next question came from my guy Nicholas. <laughs> said did you notice in the first Ravens training camp uh, video Trace McSorley and Tyler Huntley were throwing wobbly passes and nobody said a single word about it lol the double standards will never end when it comes to Lamar 
Well, I mean, those guys with Lamar, it's, it's much higher expectations. And, and while um, I don't think anybody should be tripping over a wobbly pass, uh, over a pass, every, over every pass that's not a spiral, because some people just, they look for things with Lamar. Like, oh, uh, but anyway, um, the expectations of Trace McSorley and Tyler Huntley are not that of a Lamar Jackson. The uh, the eye of the world is not on a Trace McSorley and Tyler Huntley like it is on a Lamar Jackson. So, of course, no, they're not going to get the same scrutiny. Next question came from my guy Dylan. He said, what's going on in Graven? Hope you and the fam are doing well. We're doing really good. Uh, he said, I hope you're doing good too, Dylan. But he said, uh, what do you think about Ravens trading Tay-Tay, so Tavon Young, and a second round pick for Chandler Jones? Uh, this would help both sides as the Ravens really need pass rushers and the Cardinals just lost Patrick Peterson. And we will be able to make the salary cap work since Tay-Tay has a pretty decent cap hit. And we already have Anthony Averitt and Sean Wade right there to replace him. What are your thoughts? Mm. Well, um... I don't think Cardinals would go for it uh, because of Tavon Young's injury history. I really don't think he's, um, not that he isn't tradable, but I don't think he's really tradable uh, because teams will look at his history, even his recent history, just his history over his entire career, and they may be like, uh, I don't think so. Um, I know you threw a throw. If you threw in that second round pick in there too, then they may, may consider it. Um, but I just, I wouldn't even want to do that. I, uh, I just hope he can be healthy this year, man. Because with cornerback, I just... Not that... With Sean Wade, um, he's he's really thrived on the interior of the uh, of the secondary as a slot corner. I know last year, um, they said he struggled as an outside corner. But I know his dad, when we talked to his dad, did an interview with his dad. Um, he said that uh, he was dealing with an injury. So he wasn't fully back all the way. And he wasn't really trusting himself or his body all the way throughout the entirety of the year. So that's why he kind of, uh, he, he struggled a little bit. But um, so now he's healthy though. So he should be good to go. Um, but to throw Sean Wade in the mix immediately as the slot corner, that's a lot to ask for. Not saying that he couldn't do it. But that's a lot to ask for from jump. Uh, and Anthony Averitt, Anthony Averitt got a lot better uh, over the past couple of years. And it's come with more playing time. Um, so I, I would be confident um, in, in him if, if, if they needed to replace Tay Tay or whatnot. And of course, they would have the option to always kick Marlon back in like they have done. And he's done pretty well there. Um, he's gotten better and better since he's had to play the position so much, unfortunately, due to uh, Tavon Young's injuries. Um, but I just I, I don't. Well, see now that when I when I initially read it, I was like, no, nah, that 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 wouldn't happen. And I don't I don't think the Ravens are going to trade for Chandler Jones. But um, I just, uh, when you actually read it out loud and, and say it out loud and go through your reasoning and whatnot, it's like, oh, well, that, that actually could happen. I don't think it will. Um, but it, it, it does look like a very realistic uh, trade, especially since you're doing a second round pick. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't think it would happen. Next question came from my boy, Joey Ball Sports Dude. He said, hey, Engraven, appreciate you evaluating my last question in the video. No, I appreciate you sending it. And... I appreciate you this I appreciate you this time sending it to the right email from Jump. Now I appreciate you though. Shout out to Joey. Joey, um I told him I remember watching one of his videos and he's a young dude too. I remember watching his one of his videos years ago, man. And this dude, like, um and he's known on these Twitter streets uh in the Ravens community, but this dude I I told him from jump, man, like, man, you you speak really, really good, man. He's he spoke and this dude was young. He was super young. This was like maybe like two three years ago then this dude the way that he spoke the way that he enunciated it it was just great man i'm like man this dude like if he keeps this up he is going to be uh he could go to espn and go shut all them boys down but he could start his own network podcast all that stuff and he just he sounded very very professional and just it was nice man um and then whether he's gonna be a news anchor whether he want to be a reporter whatever you want to do man that that boy got the talk game for it man anyway he said i got another question uh how close are gus edwards and jk dobbins skill wise uh much different in my opinion uh he said is it ridiculous to think that edwards is better thank you no i don't think it's ridiculous to think that it all just depends on uh what you feel what what you like really um it's <sighs> with gus edwards uh and jk dobbins um Gus Edwards doesn't get many opportunities to catch the ball. I think J.K. Dobbins, um, it seems like he got more opportunities to catch the ball. I, I, I don't know the, uh, 
the receptions and the pass attempts that were thrown that way last year. Off the top of my head, I don't know it at all. Um, but J.K., he had more drops. I'm pretty sure that he had more drops than Gus Edwards did. Um, J.K. has more, I think he has more speed than Gus Edwards, but Gus Edwards still got some burst now. He still got some burst. He got good vision. Um, and J.K. has really good vision, too. One thing about Jake, actually about both of them, um, they are very good at when they break that initial tackle, they're very good at catching their balance. That's one thing I really like about those two. They're very good at catching their balance and reestablishing themselves. Um, Gus is the more powerful back. Uh, J.K. got some power now, too, though. But Gus, I think, is more powerful. He's the, the, the stronger back. Um... I think J.K. is going to be featured more, um, but Gus is still obviously going to get his because, again, the running game is Ravens bread and butter, so they both are going to eat. But skill, so skill-wise, I guess they are kind of similar. Um, they, 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 they different styles at the same time, though, because, again, with Gus, he's more the power back, but, again, he still got speed. But J.K., he's, he's more the speed back, but he still got power.